Tonight's match at the One Khede Stadium sets the stage for a clash between Mumbai Indians and the Lucknow Super Giants. Both teams eager to close out their IPL campaign with a victory despite being out of the playoff race. The atmosphere is charged with competitive spirit as these teams aim to salvage their pride. Mumbai currently who is sitting at the 10th spot in the points table has endured a tough season with only four wins out of the 13 matches. While Lucknow with six wins stands in the competitively better position. However, with only one victory against Lucknow in their previous encounters, Mumbai will be looking to defy the odds and end of the season with the high note. Reflecting on yesterday's events, the match between Sunrisers Hyderabad and Gujarat Titans was called off due to rains resulting in both teams receiving points with each. With this, Sunrisers secured their spot in the playoffs, becoming the third team to do so this season. On the other hand, Gujarat faced yet another washout, leaving them with 12 points from the 14 matches and a sense of deja vu from their previous playoffs exclusion as the tournament edges closer to its climax. Focusing now, shift on today's uh, showdown between Mumbai and Lucknow, aim to leave their mark on the final stages of the IPL. Well, two of the sides. It's a, it's a grim uh, story for Mumbai Indians. David Brooks, the former cricket director from Channel 4, in London, sitting in his car, completely upside down, inside out, as uh, they call it, Tatinda, not the Taibu, Ziambe from cricket, uh, expert from Zimbabwe, Paul Dinnett, the podcaster from Australia, and Stanley Chudza, the former Zimbabwean cricketer and also the current coach of the Zimbabwean cricket team. I welcome all of you. Before we start the program, we'd like to throw some stats and make it a little more relevant today. Tatinda, what's, what do we have in store for us today? All right, uh, it's pretty much as low stakes as you're going to get. <laughs> Both of these teams, pretty much nothing to play for. But uh, some, th some key stats to look out for. We'll start with the fairly obvious by looking at the IPL table. Right. Uh, Mumbai right now, uh, they're currently bottom of the table and uh, just above them is Punjab. So uh, Mumbai will need to win this by a pretty decent margin to at least uh, get level with Punjab and then perhaps be above them. Failure to do that, Mumbai will equal their worst record in the IPL in 2022 where they finished bottom of the league. Apart from that, if we're looking at just your general statistics over here, uh, if we start off perhaps with the batting, mm -hmm. Lucknow Super Giants, they have not been very good. Ninth overall in the IPL. The only team worse than them, Gujarat Titans, have had two games uh, called off because of the rain. It just goes to show you what kind of a season has happened with Lucknow. If we're looking at the, at the bowling as well, least amount of wickets taken in the IPL this season. And right. Mumbai, I think they're just middling. So that's what's at stake right now. Mumbai, don't finish last. Lucknow, just pride. I Is guess. it the worst? Paul Dinnett, welcome to the show. Is it the worst of what you've seen Mumbai or was 2020 uh, even worse? Well, I think it's probably pretty close to the worst. They did come last in 2022. Right. And it's quite incredible because for the entirety of the IPL prior to that, they had been along with Chennai, right. one of the powerhouses, and they've been really smart with their money. That's the thing that uh, everyone had sort of said, they didn't break the bank, they, they bought players very intelligently. And I feel a bit sorry for them. You look at them purchasing Jofra Archer, and that was expected to be a fan's dream of Archer and Boomer bowling at the same time. The injuries to Archer meant that that never happened. They had to let go of Trent Bolt. Um, they brought in uh, Ishan Kishan, who um, hasn't quite performed as much as they might have expected. Hardik Pandya as well. Um, and I think, one of the things, and I harp upon, on about this all the time, uh, so I'm, I'm sorry if, it's, if I, no, if no, I keep on. on saying. We love to hear your accent. <laughs> <laughs> but what is Tim David doing batting so low in the order? He comes out, I've said it so many times this year, where he's come out either with um, not enough time to make an impact, or worse still, he comes out in the middle of a collapse and he's pushing singles. Tim David being required to push singles is an affront to nature. It's like buying a Ferrari and using it just to go and get the milk. Um, put him up the order. Imagine if um, Cole Carter had put Sunil Narayan down the order or if Travis Head wasn't given the chance to open um, for Sunrisers. Give him a chance in this, as we talk about it all the time, that the IPL has changed. Let's get some big scores going. IPL has changed the template. Just talk about some stats, some figures. Let's talk about the overall myth and the narrative of the great Hardik Pandya that won the championship. When you look at the figures, 
from last year and compare it to this year, they absolutely look similar. Well, the thing with Hardik Pandya is that um, he, he's part of a batting lineup that has just not performed. You, you've got, um, I've looked at the stats with in terms of the, the, the overall strike rates for, for the entire tournament. Yes. And I like looking at who's come third right. in terms of strike rate. For Mumbai, Ishan Kishan has the, their third best strike rate, but he's the 29th best of the entire tournament. You look at um, some of the teams that are really flying, mm. Heinrich Klassen is the third best for Sunrisers Hyderabad, but he's the sixth best for the tournament. Absolutely. Phil Salt, the third best for KKR, he's the ninth best for the tournament. <laughs> the only um, saving grace is that the team they're up against today, uh, LSG, Kale Raul has their third best strike rate, and that's the 49th best of the tournament. It's to Detender's point that they have been uh, remarkably unproductive with the bat. So, yeah, to come back to Hardik Pandya, uh, he's had a difficult season with the bat, not averaging all that much at a fairly low strike rate. And his bowling, um, he's gone, he's been quite expensive and hasn't taken an enormous amount of wickets. I feel sorry for him. You know, to have your, your, um, your Why own... Why should you, after being he getting paid the most uh, handsome salary of the year? Well, because you, yeah, money's great, and if, um, <laughs> I'll never knock <laughs> it back. That's why Aussies come in. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the pressure is still enormous. It must be something pretty harsh to be booed uh, at your own stadium. It'll be interesting to see what sort of reception Mumbai get today in this um, final game, at one, uh, well, their final game of the entire tournament and, and the final game at Wankhede, as they're all playing to see what will happen with the big auction next year. I wonder what happens to the coach himself, who hasn't had a great run, and he was called in as a replacement after what they uh, experienced in 2022, perhaps in 2020 as well. I would like to get in the coach uh, of the Zimbabwean team who's got a fairly decent idea of what the relationship barometer is between the captain and the coach. Stanley Chiyotza, what do you think is going wrong between the coaching, the mind and the friendship and the relationship between the coach and the skipper? How should it be and do you see anything lacking? Well, it's, it's quite interesting, uh, um, uh, especially when you talk about the events that are happening at uh, Mumbai Indians. For starters, well, in 2022, we saw the inception of, uh, of uh, Mark Boucher as coach. And in the 2023, you see a new captain yes. coming in in, in Hardik Pandya. Is this a new drive that Mumbai Indians are taking? If this is a new drive, it's important that we also give time for the captain and coach to, in, to, to sync up. But be that as it may, have they got the right players? to sync up with regards to their match play, their, their formation, and obviously their drive in terms of how this franchise should go forward. And I mean, there's so many stories that are happening outside that are taking center stage, especially with regards to the former captain in, a, in a Roy Sharma. His lack of form, is it just lack of form? Is it frustration? But at the end of the day, it's not one man who can uh, steer a ship. Every other player has to take uh, responsibility. You said they earned the big bucks, so people should put their hands up and take responsibility for uh, Who should it be, <laughs> according to you? There's somebody called a talent scout called uh, Rahul Sangvi, who's played for India. There's also an analyst who's been a part of the team. I don't know what he does. Uh, does he f uh, give them any figures? Who's at fault? Who should raise their hand? You're the coach. You tell me, who should it be? Well, Yellow like to, card or red card? <laughs> I like to put it in two, okay? And I put it in two in this way. You have a coaching staff, yes. Did they get what they asked for? If they did, they are partly to blame. You've got the players, the players that earn the big bucks, the players that are responsible for the role play that they're given, uh, that they're given to execute. Did they do that? If they did not, they are partly to blame as well. This is the IPL. It happens once in a year. And if it happens once in a year, it's your responsibility as a player to adapt as quickly as possible, just like the Sunrisers uh, players did. They found a formula. They hit the road running. Why can't other superstars in this league do the same? Do they need to be told by a coach? I feel it's unfair on the coaching staff. Absolutely. Is it unfair on the coaching staff? Let's see what the Think Tank has done and Jaspreet Bumrah, despite all his achievements, do you think his talent was wasted, Paul Dinette? Well, no, I think that he's had an amazing season. I, I think, if anything, this season has shown, if anyone needed proof... What if we were to take Bumrah's figures out of the context? What will happen to Mumbai? Well, they might not have won a game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably being a bit cruel, but... Um, no, we should all be. If you look at their figures, uh, you know, if someone wants to do the figures and remove um, Bumrah from there, then I think Mumbai would be right at the bottom in terms of... Um, they'd have the um, right down as far as economy rate and also the, the strike rate. They just wouldn't be taking the wickets. Because for Bumrah to be averaging... Uh, an economy rate of 6.5 runs per over in a tournament that we keep on saying is just breaking all established norms. 
Uh, that is remarkable, and that he's still right at the pointy end in the chase for the purple cap. Um, uh, Stanley Chioza made a really good point uh, off air um, yes. before we talked about it about the fact that uh, that they're bowling him sporadically. Maybe Stanley can 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 make that point because I think it's a really good one. Stanley, you're the bowling coach of the national team. Just come in and be brutal as you are. <laughs> well. Just when Boomer is a strike bowler. Yes. So you're not, in my position, you can't bowl him just one over in the power play. He's got to bowl at least two. But if you've got enough backup in your bowling unit, you can allow him to press on with the third over if he's doing the job, which is what he does, strike bowling. But then, because there is a, there's just not enough backup in that bowling lineup, what happens is the captain has to hold him back. Every now and then, he's not been a go-to bowler. Yes. When things have gone wrong, oh, I've got, just, I've got Boomer, I'll throw him the ball. Hold him back. Oh, I've got things are not going well. I've got Jasper Boomer. Right. You throw him in the... That's not how you handle a bowler of Jasper Is he the 9 one, one for Mumbai? <laughs> He's definitely the 9 one, one. And uh, I agree with Paul Dinnett. We could have seen the best of Jasper Boomer in this tournament. Should and if he they bowl keep... or should he take rest considering the World Cup is around the corner? Well, if you were the coach, would you play him? They have to. I have to. In the end of the day, I don't want the wooden spoon. It's, he's my best bowler and because I don't have the backup in terms of reserves. I need a win. I need to salvage some sort of a, some sort of a, a response to the negativity that's around. And obviously, this is the last game at the Wankiti Stadium. We need to finish off uh, uh, on a good note. I would play just with Boomer. Finish off on a good <coughs> note. That's an important point, uh, dear fans. Stanley has said, finish off on a good note for Mumbai means not finishing on the ninth. On the 10th and finishing on 9th. What a fall. Tatilda, just talk about the LSG. Maybe get your facts and some stats before David Brooks uh, <laughs> finally gets his uh, frame right. Before he comes the right way around. Okay, Absolutely. no, that's fine. So, uh, I think the thing you're going to have to look at LSG right now is yes. I think this is perhaps, as boys to men say, the end of the road in a sense. Uh, if you look at them, recent addition to the IPL, uh, the first two seasons, they make it to the Eliminator. Fairly good. A lot of teams would probably kill for that. However, now when you saw with the bust up that happened, or let's just say the berating with the LSG owner, with the captain, KL Rahul, it feels kind of like that. There's a, there's a kind of a curve they've gone on. Now for context, midway through the season, LSG, they were fourth in, in terms of batting, uh, batting average. Uh, fifth in terms of total runs scored, as well as bowling, uh, they were fifth in, in terms of total wickets taken. As I said now, they currently are bottom of the league in terms of wickets uh, taken uh, with 63, and they are also second bottom in terms of total runs. Now, there's been a sharp fall off from this team. They were pretty much in line for making the playoffs. Uh, we saw that they had an injury to Mayank Yadav. A couple of players went out of form. Uh, Puran kind of pulled, uh, cooled off when you thought that he was going to perhaps carry them when uh, certain situations weren't going their way when the top order collapses. So a bunch of things have come together. And unfortunately now, uh, we might very well be seeing perhaps the very last iteration of this uh, LSG team. Unfortunately, sorry Lucknow fans, but that's perhaps the way it's going to roll. Absolutely. Are they coming together? Not now. <laughs> Over me. David Brooks, is your frame all right? Can we get you on air? If yes, do you want to join? Not at all. In fact, David Brooks is still upside down, inside <laughs> out. The Diana Ross song. Stanley Chiodza, do you think these guys have got uh, LSG? Have they done justice to the kind of uh, bowling batting lineup they had? I think if I was to comment on LSG, yes. they have not done justice to the start they had. They won five out of eight matches. That was a brilliant start. You couldn't have asked for anything better. What went wrong? Obviously, you could possibly then say perhaps Nicholas Puran could have been brought out of the order a little earlier. But once again, my statement, it's not one man who wins the game for the team. It's what happens around him. Yet again, on, a, on an IPL a, a tournament with plenty of runs, have been scored. It's quite amazing how so many other batsmen, not just batsmen, but quality batsmen, have failed to score runs. It's quite amazing and I just can't put my, my fingers to it because guys have been scoring runs in, 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 this, in this tournament, but the people that we would expect to carry teams have just failed to do so and plenty of them are in this uh, Lucknow, Giants, uh, uh, Lucknow Super Giants team. Well, have they done justice? Well, who are you banking today? Stanley Chiozza. I'm going for Mumbai today. I think uh, Mumbai certainly deserves some salvage in this uh, <laughs> last game. 
things have not really been going if well Mumbai on and off the field. Mumbai deserves salvage, Manchester United deserves yeah. the EPL <laughs> crown <laughs> consecutively. Coming back to Paul Dinet, you want to just talk a little bit more about uh, the Mumbai Indians batting downfall. What a fall from grace they've had. Yeah, well, I mean, if you look at the, the, that table I was talking about of top strike rates, um, 15th is where you've, you've got to get to before you get someone from actually either team today, but it's 15th is, is Surya Kumar Yadav, who has a, a strike rate of 170 and an average of 39, which is a decent season. I mean, he got that spectacular century, which um, really pads those stats out. Oh, that's the wrong way of saying it. It's a, it's a legitimate thing, thing to do. But then um, Tim David, who I described as needing more opportunities, Average 30, strike rate of 159, pretty good in most IPLs, but just not this one. But then the real problem came, Ishan Kishan averaging only 24, Rohit Sharma averaging only 29, and Hardik Pandya averaging only 18. Um, Tilak Varma averaging 42, a strike rate of 150, uh, probably enhanced his reputation, but the rest of them, it just wasn't there. Absolutely, the rest of them are business class passengers with nowhere to go, <laughs> with a boarding pass in their hand. And that's why Tilak Varma has made it to the World Cup. Well, that's all we had time for. Tatinda, one quick word from you. Who are you backing and why? <laughs> uh, in this situation, I, I think I'm kind of backing Mumbai. The only reason why, you know I like Virat Kohli. KL Rahul, please come to RCB. We want you, we need you. Help Virat win a title. That's all. Mumbai Indians. <laughs> I wonder, is he from Harare or is he from Bangalore? <laughs> but that's all we had time for. We had some stats, we had some analysis and we had some Questions, difficult questions to ask, and that to courtesy the fans. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.